Right, I'm sitting here with Callum Stewart. He's going to be fighting on the next uh, Fusion fight in 30 in June. Callum, you you fight in K1, so you're part of the K1 um, performers on this card instead of the MMA guys. You fight a pro, so this will be your third fight as pro now. Your one win, your one draw. Talk through what you're feeling right now. How are you feeling stepping into this fight? Uh, I feel good. I feel very confident. My skill set has improved a lot. Um, I'm just ready to go out there and take out the problem in front of me. So do you know much about your opponent coming up? So you are fighting in K1 again this time, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. So do you know much about your opponent coming up this time? Not much. I know that he's in the same weight, hopefully. <laughs> um, no, just that he's going to come in there and he's going to fight. I know he wants to, he wants to scrap, he wants to fight. Um, I'm excited, that's all I can say. <laughs> no, that's it, so you look excited. I said from your previous fights, you've always looked very confident in there. You know, you've always looked to finish the fights as well. Talk us through, um, you know, your last fight, how that went, you know, and how long ago was that now since you fought? Um, my last fight, last time I stepped in the cage was last April, um, and I finished the fight within under a minute by leg kicks. So you finished by leg kicks, so you've left it quite a while now till your this fight coming up. Um, what reason is that, if you mind me asking? I uh, had a couple of injuries before other fights and stuff like that. Um, like right on the day as well, um, but I'm healthy, better, and my skill set's 10 times better than it was last year. Like I said, 19 years old, you know, like you shouldn't be getting too many injuries now, so yeah, hopefully no. you're... 19 going on 40. <laughs> that's, that's it, yeah. Well, hopefully you, you recovered well from whatever injuries you had there. Um, so what made you initially, you know, think, do you know what, I want to do K1 fighting, boxing? Was it anyone in the family? Did you know people at KFA? How did it bring you to this point today? Um, I actually used to play football. Um, and started doing this, started boxing to get fit. Then I found out kickboxing and MMA. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like boxing's like, it's good fun, but it's very one dimensional. Um, if I could throw kicks in there as well, <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? I mean, taking people to the ground. I'm learning the jiu jitsu at the moment, um, starting off in BJJ. Um, and hopefully one day, maybe within the next year, I can make the transition to MMA as well. So, yeah, you're doing your stand up. You, you know your stand up well. You know how to throw kicks, you know how to throw punches really well. You learn your jiu jitsu now as well. Um, how long have you been training in BJJ? Um, on and off for a while, but only recently have I started, you know, committing to it, knuckling down. Have you um, got any? Uh, you got any thoughts in your head? Maybe you want to perform in some out of competition, you know, um, out of fight competitions like Jiu Jitsu, British Opens, anything like that? Hundred percent this summer. Hundred percent. I'm going to get as many as I can in. And are there any that you've got? You're, you're, you're focusing on now. So after this fight, are you looking to get straight into doing those sort of competitions? Yeah, man. I'm not too bothered where they are. I'd like to actually quite like to travel around and do them as well. Um, I know a lot of people that travel around and do different BJJ competitions, so it's just experience, isn't it? If I can, I'm, I'm young, so if I can rack up as much experience as I can, I could be the best fighter I can be. No, that's it, and you've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to train people you're not used to training with. But talking about people you do train with, is there anyone in the gym in particular? Like, I know Mark is one of the top-level jiu-jitsu guys you're in here, but are there any particular people in the gym you'd like to say, like, you know, you really like training your jiu-jitsu particularly with them because they push you to your level? Um, mate, all the guys down here are incredible at jiu-jitsu. Like, ev like everyone here that here, even the white belts, like everyone that's got a blue belt is a serious blue belt. You know that they're like a step ahead of everyone. Um, Harry's really good. Tom, uh, Mark is actually as well, and, like incredible. Elliot, Ryanel, yeah, all of them. So, how have you found? I know you said you, you, you want to transition to MMA at some point. Obviously, what point is that going to make you want to actually make that find, make that step over to the MMA world? What is it going to take? Because obviously, your next fight is still K1. Yeah. You've only had a couple of fights there. Is that something you may want to get a few more fights on? What's what's the plan? Yeah, more experience in the K1. You know, feel, feel out the cage a bit, um, get used get used to it. You know, feel comfortable in there. Um, and I want to be a blue belt. Um, I don't want to go into MMA. you see so many like amateur MMA white belts. I want to be a blue belt 100%. So yeah, we're looking at a good year, maybe more. <laughs> no, so don't you don't. The last thing you do is go in there straight away when you feel you're like you're not ready. Like I know you get some strange breeds, such as Mr. Harry Hobbs down there, 16 yeah. years old, jumps straight in. But look at the look at the people he's got behind his father. You know, owning the gym, he's probably been getting tapped out since he was 10 years old from his father. Do you know what I mean? But no, it's good for you to keep you know keep racking up. Um, so the transition to MMA. Because you'd have such an extensive K1 background, you feel confident on the feet. Would it be? Would you want to do a few amateur fights first, or is it something you'd maybe jump straight into pro? What sort of plan would you have with that? 100% amateur fights first. Yeah, I think. Again, I'm only 19. Um, experience, experience, experience is all I want. Um, I mean, that amateur record isn't something you can be too fussed about. I want to fight. I want to have some hard fights at amateur level. Um, get in there, get my arse beat a bit. <laughs> hey, I've seen some amateur fights, especially some of the guys here, and you wouldn't think they're amateur fighters. Yeah. Like, I've attended some big organisations such as, you know, Bellator and places like Cage Warriors. And no disrespect to any of those fighters on that card, I feel a lot of the fighters here who fight amateur 
could actually do quite well against them sort of fighters yeah. there. So you've definitely got the right people behind you here. So what's it like training at KFA? Have you always trained at KFA? Or is, have you been elsewhere before coming here? Uh, no, I've always trained at KFA. Yeah, a team full of savages. Yeah, there's a lot of people coming up from this gym. Um, they're going to make some big noise soon, 100%. So what brought you here to this particular gym? Did you just Google it, local gyms, or did you know someone who was here? Um, well, I live about 15 minutes down the road, but um, my uncle started training here as well, my auntie. So I was like, well, do you know what, I might as well pop along, see what it's like, and ended up staying here. So you fed up of the uncle and auntie, like weighing you in all the time, basically. <laughs> basically beating you up all the time, think, wait a minute, like you lot are meant to be the more behaved ones, and you're beating me up, so. And what, what's the support at home like doing all this sort of thing? Love hate, love hate. Um, is it the, the, no, no, don't want to be sexist, but is it mother hates and dad likes sort of thing? I think, well, my, yeah, my dad loves it, but my mum does love it as well. She she loves it when she's there, but obviously um, they get to deal with the the weight cut as well, the aftermath of walking around like a limp for a couple of days. But um, yeah, they love it. They love it. What do you tend to walk around at then before your fights? Um, occasionally, let's say a month before your fight. A month before my fight, probably about seventy-seven. Um, and what you cut to? 70, 70 can do, 72, 75, I, I fight anywhere between 70 and 80. So you're one of these newer sort of fighters that everyone's encouraging to um, actually fight at their natural weight class. You're not, you're 19 years old, as at a young age, well, at any age, you don't want to be shredding too much weight because it's just going to damage you in the long run. What do you think about it? I did it in my first fight and I looked like Skeletor. It was horrible, horrible. How low did you cut to in your first fight? 70. Oh, you cut some? Yeah, I mean, I can do it. I felt good, I felt fine, I just didn't look fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, your, your cheeks are all sucked in. Um, I didn't feel as powerful as I do now, but again, I've been smashing cardio, I've been eating really healthy, so I did feel good. There's just not as much power there as I'd like. So, I mean, this fight, this fight, I'm going to be around my um, natural weight. So, when you had your second fight then, okay, what did you, what, what weight class did you fight at then when you had your second fight? And that was catch weight at 73. I felt a lot more comfortable. Why was it catch weight? Was it you or the other guy or was it just something you agreed on? A mutual, mutual decision, yeah, yeah. And you felt comfortable that way. Did you feel like you had to, because you obviously, that's the fight you won, correctly, from the leg kicks. So the previous fight, it was a draw. Mm -hmm. That must be a nightmare for someone like yourself. You're thinking, yeah. my first MMA fight, uh, sorry, my first pro K1 fight in a cage, and it's a draw. You know, some people don't see a draw in their whole career, let alone their first fight. So how were you yeah. thinking, thinking, I've got, I know you didn't win, you didn't lose, but what were you thinking? Like thinking, I've got a draw? You know, most people don't see that any time. Yeah, I mean, it was a difficult one, because you get people say you win, you get people say you lost. Um, Personally, I think the draw was actually the right decision. Uh, there's a lot of people that go out and say, oh, I won the fight. I think the, the draw was the right decision. Um, as much as my mates and my family, like you won, I personally think it's a draw. Um, I mean, the guy was six foot five. I'm five, ten and a half. How much weight was he cutting? Yeah, exactly. He was like a bean pole though, but he, he was a good fighter. He was very long limbed. It was hard to get in on him and it was a very scrappy fight. I wasn't technical enough. Um, I feel if I did use my technique a bit more and didn't get too like, angry and overwhelmed, and again, it was my first fight, I, prob I could have beat him. But um, draw, great fight, good scrap. I mean, we went at it for every, every single second of every single round. So what changes have you made? Um, obviously, you don't need me too many because you finished your finished opponent quite quickly with leg kicks in the, first, in the second fight. So what changes have you made like, in the last year you've been out? Like, what have you focused on mainly like, improving in your game? Kicking the legs harder. No, <laughs> um, no we're... Um, my hands as well, yeah, working my boxing, working on my movement. Um, instead of being like stuck in that, like in between the tile style and the K1, like learning when to mix it, when to go tie, when to go K1, being able to get the best of both worlds. Because you see so many tie fighters going and they get beat up on the hands, so many K1 fighters going and they get their legs chopped. So I want to be the perfect balance of both. Did you find with your opponent you found was quite, you know, quite tall, you know, cut a lot of weight, the legs were the easy targets and maybe not the most meat on them? Yeah, 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 I smacked into his legs. Yeah, I mean, that's my bread and butter, I love a leg kick. Um, but yeah, just mix it up, setting up the leg kicks as well. Fainting, we're, we've been doing loads and loads of work down here on feints. Um, setting up tips from the leg kicks, head kicks, question marks, like everything just to, you know, create your little game. Is there anyone particularly you do stand up with here you try to avoid? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says Tom. What, why is that? I know he's obviously he's, a, he's an ex-Bellator cage warrior's man. He's a fusion champion. Um, how do you fare sparring with people like himself? I enjoy sparring with him, but at the same time, you know, you're going to go home with a couple of bruises and a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a sore head. Well, he's an ex, well, he's an ex champion of Queen's Boxing League. You know, I'm pretty sure he's undefeated, if I remember rightly. Um, but again, you've got some of the best people around you. You've got him for the stand-up. Yes. His ground game is amazing. You've got Mark for the ground game as well. Um, I know Mark's affiliated with Nova Forza Gym, which is run by Ricardo de Silva, massive name in the worldwide sort of um, organisation. Have you had a chance to go train some jiu-jitsu with those boys up there at all, or have they come down here? 
I haven't trained up there with them. A couple of them came down here, you know, when we had like photo shoots and stuff and uh, for Fusion. I mean, we did loads of like, we did pads and a little bit of light sparring and stuff and movement. And man, they're, they're all good. They're amazing. They're, like, it's a really, really high level jujitsu, high level like stand up as well. Um, they have a couple K1 fighters as well. There you go. So you've got, again, you've got even more options to choose from. As you said, more experience, yeah. the better. That's what you're looking for. As I said, you're the new breed coming through. You have learned K1 before, but you're learning MMA as a whole. You're not going to jiu-jitsu lesson, yeah. followed by, an, by a K1 lesson, followed by a Thai boxing lesson. Yeah. You're learning as a whole now, yeah. which a lot of people like myself, who's like 32 now, didn't get the opportunity. There wasn't MMA around. I've, I know I said like a broken record. I've said it on so many interviews before. But doing all these interviews, you young guys taking the time is because you're the you're the future. Yeah, yeah. You're the future of this sport, um, you know. And you see them coming for the UFC. You got like 21 year olds and like, like look at Israel Adesanya, for example. Yes, Savage is one of my favourite fighters. His kickboxing record is unreal. That's it, like again, that's someone I want to emulate. Um, I mean, not emulate. You don't want to be like anyone else, but it's someone that I look up to. Yeah. So someone like Young come through, probably yeah. just learn MMA as a whole as himself. That's the sort of thing you'll do. Same situation. Yeah. So right, Callum, so let everyone out there know where they can see your next fight and how they can get tickets for it. Right, it's Fusion Fighting Championships 30, um, June 15th, I believe. Get tickets through me, if you can. Um, <laughs> no, you can go Commission? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can go online and get tickets, but I mean, everyone fighting there is, oh, man, it's going to be amazing. The whole KFA team are going to be down there. Good fights and a lot of knockouts. That's what we want to win. And I said last time, I think, pretty much remember, I think over 70% of the fights ended by first round knockout, I remember rightly, or finished at least that many. So I'm sure you'll be one of them again this time. Let them out there know, obviously, we want to keep everyone following you guys, we want people to know who you are, you're the new breed up and coming. Where can they follow your career? Like social networks, things like that. Yeah, right. Instagram, it's Callum.Stuart. Facebook, Callum Stewart. Uh, Twitter, Callum Stewart. Just everything, I'm on everything, get at it. Make sure you look for the fighter, Callum Stewart. As you know, there's a top 10 single artist out there. I'm sure you'd like to be him as well. <laughs> you know? I think I've got a better voice than him. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, really look forward to seeing you fight at Fusion 30, mate. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Awesome. Cheers, guys.